Good morning, and let me welcome all of our North Star campuses. We are so excited that you are with us today. And I'm going to ask all of those here at our Panama City campus, if you would, put your hands together and welcome all of our other campuses this morning. So glad um, that you guys are with us. And uh, we want to welcome you to week number two of Detox, where we have began a series last week uh, that we're going to be navigating through throughout the month of January. And I'm very, very excited because I really believe that the series is going to be foundational not only for us as a church, but also for all of our campuses and for each one of us individually as uh, we begin the 2016 year. And so I want to just uh, encourage everyone, if you would, at this time to go ahead and take out your message notes. That way you're going to be able to follow along with me as I begin to teach today. And I hope that uh, you came to church this morning excited uh, because you want to grow in your relationship with God. And I really believe that God has something for you, and I want to do everything I can today to help you, um, you know, get, the, get the Word of God inside of your heart, and uh, you'll be able to grow in your relationship with Him. Now, in this series, Detox, there's a couple of things that I want to point out that we're doing as a church, and today is a very important day because we began what we are calling a fast. Now, let, let me kind of explain this in what I believe could be, be possibly the most simple, um, simplistic terms that would help you sort of wrap your mind around what I'm going to be asking these next few weeks together. Uh, what I'm going to be asking you to do is just simply this. Uh, choose something that last week we talked about uh, where in the message I said, hey, here's something that in your relationship with God uh, that may be a toxin in your life. And so we talked about how we detox in our spirit. And if you remember, there were three sort of three things I gave you. I, I basically said this. I said, Guys, all of us struggle in three areas of our life, uh, with doubt, with negativity, and with sin. Now, so this week, what I'm asking, as we begin the fast, is that if you're not fasting from food or you're not fasting from, you know, from something else, that you would just step back this week and say, you know what, in the area of doubt, there are some relationships in my life that I know that every time I'm around that person that they just affect me and they cause me to doubt not only my relationship with God, but to doubt my faith. And what I'm going to do, and I know this sounds crazy, but I'm just going to fast from that relationship for the next six days. And so you just make a commitment to do that. For others of you, maybe in your life, it's negativity. And, and you know that every time you listen to the news and every time you get on social media, that you struggle with negativity. And so this week, just for the next six days, you would say, you know what? I'm going to just completely fast from social media. For others of you, uh, maybe it's a sin, a specific sin, and you know that that sin is affecting your relationship with God or your relationship with your spouse or your relationship in, in, in some way, and you know that that particular sin is the sin that you struggle with, and so you're just going to make a conscious choice to say, hey, I'm going to fast from whatever that is that I continue to find myself struggling with so that I can be more connected with God. So let me just say it this way. I think it's going to help everybody on all of our campuses. Here's what, we're, here's what we're doing. For the next 21 days, as a church, we're setting aside a time where we're praying together. So we're just asking you to find a time during the day that you're going to fast from something, and during that specific time, you're going to focus in and you're going to pray for four things that we're talking about or, or that we're asking everyone to pray for. And if you would like to pick up one of the prayer guides, uh, you can get it online. You can pick one up on your campus. And what we're asking is that you would pray for the lost in our community, our Easter services, our February series, and then all of our campuses and new campus launches. And over this next 21 days, let's just covet together to pray to see what God's going to do this year, not only in your life, but also in the life of the church. And then I want to just kind of stop right here and say one more thing, and we're going to dive in today. Guys, prayer is our connection with God. Fasting is what disconnects us from the world and the toxins and the things in our life that keep us from being connected with God in the way that we know that we should be connected. So just think of it in this way. Prayer is my connection with God. Fasting is disconnecting from the things around me in the world that may be affecting my relationship with God or may be affecting me spiritually in my life from being the person that God wants me to be. And so today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about soul detox and how each and every one of us in our souls need to do a detox. So let me just kind of go back and I want to begin with what does detox mean? Detox just simply means this. 
It's the removal of toxic substance from a living organism. So what we're saying is that through fasting, we are trying to remove out of our lives those things, those toxic substances that keep us from being connected to God and that keep us from being connected with the relationships and the people that are around us and having the spiritual life that God wants us to have that may rob us of the joy and the peace and the happiness and, 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 and the things that God wants for our life. And we're just saying to God at the very beginning of the year that, God, we're going to tithe the first part of the year back to you. We're going to give you the first 21 days. We're going to take uh, January the 11th through January the 31st, the first part of the year, and we're just going to pray together, and God, we're going to fast together, and we're going to get these toxins out of our lives in order that we can become and be everything that you want us to be. And so we began with a passage of scripture that I want to go back to just for a moment, and I want us to look at. God's word tells us that it's important that we disconnect ourselves out of, away from the things in this world that keep us spiritually connected from God, to, to God. Listen to what it says. Don't team up. And other translations say, do not be yoked with those who are unbelievers. Now, I said this last week, I want to say it again. doesn't mean that we shouldn't have relationships with un unbelievers, but it means that we should not connect ourselves we shouldn't team up or be yoked in such a way that their influence on us is greater than our influence on them because then the relationship becomes toxic. And so he goes on and explains it. He says, how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness and how can light live with darkness? And then what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? And how can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? And then listen to what, what Paul says here. He, go, he goes on and he says, for we are the temple of the living God. So, so here's what we're, we're saying. We're saying that church is not the temple. It, it, God doesn't reside in this place or in a building or at one of our campuses. God lives in each one of us. And, and the reason that he instructs us to detox and the reason that he says, hey, there are things in your life that are affecting your relationship with me, and you need to get those things out of your life, he's just simply saying to us, hey, you need to detox from those things because I live and I dwell on the inside of you. So listen to what he says. He says, God, as God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And therefore... Come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord, and don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. So he says, hey, come out away from those things. Detox yourself from those things. And that's what we're focusing on, guys. We're, we're looking at how we can detox ourselves from those things that are affecting our relationship with God and our spiritual lives. And then he, he continues and he says this, and I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty. And then in verse 1, it says, because I have these promises, that is, that God's going to live in the side of us, that we're going to be his sons and daughters, that he's going to walk with us and fill us, because we have this promise, it says, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves, let us detox ourselves. There's the word. Let us get those toxins out of our lives, that everything that can defile our body or our spirit, our, our spirit, our connection to God, and let us work towards complete holiness because we fear God. And so for 2016, what I want for you is for you to live the best life that you can live, to experience life in its fullness, to have the life that God wants for you and that God has promised to each and every one of us. And the only way that we can do that the bottom line is that we have to starve some things out of our life, and we have to feed some things into our, li our life. And so I want you just to write it down again. Every week we're going to talk about this. There are some things that we've got to starve. We've got to starve our soul from some things, and we've got to feed our soul with some things. And today we're going to talk about that. What are some things that we need to starve ourselves from? What are some things we need to get out of our life in order that we can feed ourselves the right things so that we can be connected with God, have the joy, the happiness, the peace, the, the promises of God in our life, and to be able to live with God's anointing and God's blessing on our life in 2016 in the way that God wants to bless us and be with us as he's promised in his word. So there are some things that we have to starve out of our life. 
And I want to talk very specifically about those just for a few moments because anytime you and I starve these things out, what begins to happen is, is it begins to help us focus on putting the right things in. That's why prayer and fasting, fasting away from the toxins, praying and being connected to God so that we can focus in at the first part of the year and we can become everything that he wants us to become and be everything that he wants us to be in our lives. So when we talk about the soul, let me just explain what I'm saying. The soul deals with our mind, our will, and our emotions. And so what we're talking about are what are the toxins that break our will, that keep us from doing the things that we know that we should be doing, and what are the toxins that negatively affect our emotions? That, that emotionally begin to get inside of us and, and, and take away the joy and the peace and, and the happiness that we have on the inside. And then what are the toxins that confuse our mind? What are the toxins that confuse our mind? And so I'm going to list about eight or ten of them for you. Now, please understand, this list is not comprehensive. But I will guarantee you this, there's probably one of these that you are struggling with in your life. And it's a toxin that, that, that next week I'm going to come back and say, hey... For the next six days, what are one of these that, as you thought about last week, you can begin to, to fast from, and you can begin to kind of put it outside of your life? So let's look at some of those toxins together. I want you to write them down. Here's what the psalm says. In Psalm 42, verse 5, it says, Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul, and why are you crying the blues? Why are you crying the blues? And some of you can identify with this this morning. You're like, man, that sounds like my soul. My soul is in the dumps, and it's just crying the blues. Well, why is that? It's because of the toxins. And I guarantee you it's probably because of one of these. And I want you to just write it down. Here we go. The first one is busyness. For some of you, busyness is keeping you from being connected to God and being connected even with your family and your spouse and your friends in the way that God wants you to be connected. And your busyness is keeping you away from church and is keeping you away from the things of God because you're chasing after stuff you've got no business chasing after. Secondly, gossip. For some of you, you're constantly gossiping. And because of gossip, every time you get around that person, you are talking about other people and you know, as soon as you start talking, you know there's something in your spirit that says, man, I just don't feel connected to God the way that I should. And it affects your relationship with other people. And you know that, hey, this is a toxin in my life. For others of you, it's unforgiveness. And we talked about this in our last series. You've got unforgiveness in your life. And the only thing that's happening is that that unforgiveness is not affecting the other person, but it's a toxin inside of you that's caused you to become bitter and angry on the inside. For others of you, it's um, comparison. You're constantly comparing yourself to other people. You're always looking around and saying, I wish I could be like him, or I wish I could be like her, or I wish, you know, and you're just constantly comparing. You're comparing the car that you drive and the house that you live in, the clothes that you wear, the job that you have, the title that you have at work, right? You're always comparison, and it's a toxin inside of you, and it's eating away at your soul. But not only that, notice this, for others, it's anger. You're so angry on the inside. And it's a toxin, and it's killing you on the inside. It's robbing you of joy and peace and happiness in your life. And then for others of us, worry, worry. In the last series, we talked about this. Some of us, we just worry about everything, and worry gets on the inside, and we can't be at peace in our hearts and in our minds because we're constantly worrying about our kids. We're constantly worrying about our job. We're constantly worrying about the future or what's going on in the present, and we cannot experience what God wants us to experience in our life and our connectivity with Him and, and live the way that God wants us to live. For others of us, it's bitterness. It's bitterness. And, be, and because you're angry, you become bitter, or because you, you, know, you found yourself in a place that you're unforgiving, bitterness has taken root in your heart, and you don't even realize the damage that it's causing on the inside. For others of us, it's lying. And we're just constantly not telling the truth. And anytime we're, we're somewhere, we're, we're pretending, we've got a mask on, and we're lying to ourselves. Some of us are lying to ourselves. Others of us are lying to other people. And that lying is a toxic on the inside of us. For others of us, it's, it's discontentment. It's discontentment. We just can't be content where we are in life. We're not content with our, our marriage, and I don't mean that like, you know, we, we should never be content. We always want to grow in our relationship, right? 
But some of us are discontent with the person that we marry. We're discontent with the car that we drive and the house that we live in and the clothes that we wear and the job that we have and where our kids go to school and we're never satisfied with anything. We don't even like Pastor Marty's preaching. I mean, good heavens, we're just discontent all the time, right? And discontentment robs us of peace, guys. And it robs us of the ability to find contentment in life. And I really believe this. And some of us, maybe this is the one that we struggle with the most. But I believe if we can ever get to the place that we can truly be content, I don't think the enemy can tempt us. How can he? Because I'm content. I'm content with the the wonderful person that God's given me in my life to be married to. I'm content with what? I'm content in my relationship with God. I'm content with the place that I am in life. I'm content with God. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. Contentment. But then notice this, the last one, jealousy. Jealousy. Some of us are so jealous. We're just jealous of everybody around us. And, and, And that jealousy gets on the inside of us and it keeps us from being able to be connected to God and to have the kind of relationship that God wants us to have. Now, guys, watch this. This is important. These are the toxins. These are the things that get on the inside of us, and they affect our mind, our will, and our emotions. And and you can do the math. You're smart. You know, like, like you can look at this and go, man, I know how busyness is affecting me. You already know it. You you know exactly what needs to happen. But here's the question. How do we get these toxins out of us and begin to put into our life the things that would help us to push these out and to be the person that God wants us to be? To be able to be more like Christ and to experience the joy and the peace and the happiness that every single one of us want to be able to experience. To have that abundant life that Jesus promises in John 10.10. He says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And I don't know about you, but I want that abundant life in 2016. I want to be able to live the way God says that I can live in 2016. And so Proverbs 4 verse 23 says this. It says, guard your hearts because above, above all else, for it determines the course of your life. So we have to guard our hearts is what the Bible tells us. How do we do that? Well, the first thing that you've got to do is you've got to begin to feed your soul with some things that are healthy. How, how do you do that? The first thing that you've got to do is you've got to feed your soul right relationships. Feed your soul right relationships. If you don't hear anything else I say today, I want you to hear this. Did you know that the relationships you choose in your life are probably one of the most important decisions you'll ever make? Now, some of you are sitting there going, really, Pastor Marty, you think that's the most important decision I'll ever make in my life? Let let me just ask you this. The person you married, was that an important decision? That was a very big decision. It affects the rest of your life. And guys, you show me who your friends are, and I will show you the final destination of your life. I will show you the direction of your life. I will show you what's going to happen in your life, because our friends are a very big decision that we make in our life. And if we are going to detox ourselves of some of the things that, that happen in our life, some of the toxins that we talked about, the busyness and the anger and the jealousy, some of those things that we looked at, we have to have the right relationships in our life. In fact, God's solution to a toxic soul is right relationships. And that's why here at North Star, we think relationships are so important. And that's why small groups are such a huge part of everything that we do here at North Star. And that's why right now, we are giving you the privilege and the opportunity of being able to get into a group where you can begin to plug your life in with some friends, where you can begin to grow in your relationship with Christ. You see, some of you, you think you need another church service. You don't need another church service. What you need is you need some friends and a small group where you can do life with. Because God uniquely designed you to be able to do life with others. So I want to challenge you this morning that if you're not in a small group and you're not doing life with other people, that you would just take the program out, that you would look there at the small groups that are available, that you would go online or you would go out into the lobby today at your campus and you would sign up on the back of your connection card and you would just say, I'm going to begin to do life with a group of other people because small groups are a place where, guys, guess what? Here's what happens. You can begin to hear the truth about your life. 
You'll get the word of God and you'll begin to open it up. And it's not so much about the Bible study. It's about the conversations that you begin to have in group. And you begin to do what? You begin to say, I can take that mask off and stop lying and pretending. And I can begin to get real with a group of other people where I can begin to really and truly begin to get some of those toxins in my life out of my life. Because now I've got some friends who can hold me accountable. I've got some friends who will say, hey, I want to walk alongside you and help you because I know that you're struggling in this area of your life. And the Bible tells us that if we will get those kinds of friends in our life and we'll begin to confess our sins to one another and we begin to pray for one another, it says in James chapter 5 that we'll be healed of those toxins. And you're thinking to yourself, how, how do you get healed of jealousy? And how do you get healed of anger? And how do you get healed of busyness by being in a small group? Because you have accountability with somebody. You have somebody who can pray with you and somebody who can walk alongside you and hold you accountable for the busyness. Ladies, for the gossiping maybe that you, you find yourself gossiping on a consistent basis. Now you've got somebody that can help you or for that unforgiveness that you're working through and you're struggling in your heart and in your life. And let me just tell you how important this is. In my own life, I have moments as a pastor, believe it or not. There are weak moments in my life, and there are moments when I can just pick up the phone and I can call a friend and say, listen, I'm about to go cray-cray. I mean, I'm, I'm fixing to get postal on somebody, okay? And, and I need you to, to help me before I wig out and do something I know I shouldn't do. And they're like, Marty, you, you don't, you don't want to do that. And that's not a, a good decision, and, and, and the path that you're walking on, it, it's not good for you, and they hold me accountable, and they help me. And guys, here's what the Bible says. Listen to this. And young people on all of our campuses, I want you just to listen to the words of wisdom that are shared here. Listen to what it says. It says, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools, and you'll wind up in jail. You're going to run the car off in the ditch. You're going to smoke something you shouldn't smoke. You're going to do something that you're going to regret later on in life. That's what it says. Get in trouble. Just fill in the blank there. You show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. And God says, hey, it's important that if you're going to feed your soul the right things, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to feed it the right relationships. And young people, if you want to stay on the right path and you want to move in the right direction, and mom and dad, if you want to model it for your kids, then you've got to make a choice and a decision that you're going to feed your life the right kind of relationships. The second thing we've got to do to get these soul toxins out of our life is we've got to feed our soul or feed your soul a God-defined identity, a God-defined identity. You see, for so many of us, we don't know who we are. And the thing that you've got to understand is that God alone is the only one that can define who you are. God made you, and because God has made you, he's the one that defines who you are. You see, we can't let our feelings define who we are. I mean, think about it. We'll be up today, and we'll be down tomorrow. Our feelings can't define who we are. The culture can't de define who we are. And many of us, that's what we're doing. We're looking to the culture, and we're letting the culture define who we are. And God forbid, don't let Hollywood define who you are. And don't allow yourself to get to the place that you're letting someone else define who you are. For some of you, you've allowed your parents to define you. You've allowed your friends to define you. You've allowed other people to speak into your life and to define who you are. And, and here's the thing, guys. I want for you in 2016 for you to find your identity in Christ. For you to look at the word of God and to listen to what God says to you. He says, you are a child of the king. He has defined that you belong to him. We are sons and daughters of, 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 the, of the heavenly father. And because of that, we, 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 we can say, hey, listen, God has defined who I am. And all of a sudden, when I understand my identity in Christ, now guess what? I'm no longer struggling with comparison, because God only made one of me, and I don't have to look over here at her, and I don't have to look at him, and I don't have to look at them and say, you know what, I'm going to compare myself to them because I want to be like them. No, I don't have to do that because I know who God has made me. I don't have to be jealous of what other people have. I don't have to be jealous of the clothes that she wears. I don't have to be jealous of the way that she looks. I don't have to be jealous of what he looks like. Why? Because I know who I am in Christ. And guess what? Now I'm not discontent. 
I'm not going to be discontent with the car that I drive and the house that I live in and the, and the place that I am in life and where God has blessed me and made me to be. I, I, all of a sudden, I find contentment in life. And I'm just saying to you today, don't allow the world to define who you are. You have a God-defined identity, something that God has for you to do and something that God wants you to do in your life. In fact, listen to how the Bible puts it. It says it this way. It says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 4, make a careful exploration of who you are. It says explore who you are, right? Find out who you are. And the work that you have been given, that that God uniquely has designed you for a job, for a specific task, for a work. And then it says, and then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself and don't compare yourself with others. Can I tell you one of the most freeing things that ever happened to me in my life is the moment that I stopped comparing myself to every other pastor in America. The moment that I said, you know what, I will never be able to be Billy Graham, I can't be Andy Stanley, I can't be Rick Warren, God didn't design me to be any of those guys. The only person that God designed me to be is Marty Martin, and if I'll be the best Marty Martin that I can possibly be, then God not only will be happy and pleased with me, but I will be content, and I will be happy, and I will have peace on the inside. And guys, I am here to tell you today that if you don't define who you are according to the word of God, everybody else has a suggestion for you. They do. And they will define it for you in your life. And I don't want that for you today. I want you, I want you to have a God-defined identity. And can I tell you in 2016 how we can help you as a church? We have a growth, a growth track. And, 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 and all, of our, all of our campuses, we want you to know that all you have to do is get plugged into the growth track. Because in the growth track, guess what we're going to do? We're going to help you discover who you are in Christ. And then we're going to help you discover your purpose and, and the way that you can serve uniquely the way that God has made you. And so this year, in 2016, I just simply want to challenge you that you would just get in on the growth track. You would begin to work it into your life. It only takes four weeks And if you'll participate and be a part, I promise you it will make a difference in your life this year. Number three, the third thing that we have to do, uh, we have to feed our soul a crucified life. We have to feed our soul a crucified life. Now, that's a very churchy word. And I know some of you, when you hear that word, you think to yourself, crucified, are you saying that I got to kill myself? Well, listen to me. Here's what I mean by that. A crucified life means that every day I start the day by putting to death the things in my life that are not like God, that are not like Christ. In fact, let me just say it another way. Maybe this will help you. It means that when I start the day, I'm willing to say to God, God, today I am going to give up my rights to the things that I think that I'm entitled to. Now, some of y'all didn't even get that. It means that I start the day and I say, God, I'm going to give up my rights to the things that I think that I'm entitled to. God, I'm entitled to that affair. I'm entitled to more debt. I'm entitled to come home and to sit in the recliner. I'm entitled to my opinion, right? To have have my own opinion. I'm entitled to the anger that I have and the unforgiveness because nobody else really understands what they did to me. I'm entitled to throw that fit. I'm entitled to cut that person off in traffic and to slam on the brakes and to give the universal sign depending on what day it is, right? I mean, you just think to yourself, I'm entitled to that, right? But listen to what Galatians 2.20 says. It says it this way. It says, no, we're not entitled. My old self has been crucified with Christ. That is, it's died. I've said, hey, I don't have any rights. I'm not entitled to anything. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. So I live this earth, So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So here's what I'm doing. I'm starting the day saying, God, I'm not entitled. I'm not entitled. And I'm going to give up my rights. And Lord, as I give up my rights, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put to death on the inside those things that I think I am entitled to. And so you take a few minutes in your quiet time and you say to God, today I'm going to put to death that unforgiveness that I have in my heart. Today, I'm going to put aside that anger that I know that I feel entitled to, but God, I'm not going to get angry on the highway when I get cut off. I'm just going to say, praise the Lord, bless Jesus, and I'm going to keep moving on because I'm not entitled. And God, I'm not going to be bitter because I'm not entitled to that bitterness. And I'm not going to covet because, God, I'm not entitled 
to have more things in, in the way that I want them. And I'm not going to be selfish. And I'm not going to lust. And I'm putting to death that jealousy and that quarreling. And not, not tomorrow, guys. Today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just focus on today. Today, God, I'm going to die to myself. And then what am I going to do? Watch. Now I'm going to begin to say, God, through Galatians 5, pour into me today love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. So God, take out the flesh. Take out that, that, that entitled attitude that I have and put into me the spirit where I can begin to live in the right way and reflect who Jesus is as I live it out this day in the world around me. And that's exactly what God wants for us. And it's the very way that in our soul we begin to kill those toxins is we have to die to ourselves and we have to say, I'm not entitled and I don't have rights and I want to live in the spirit and allow God to work through me. So as I pray, I'm going to be connected to God. And as I fast, I'm going to begin to get those things out of my life that I know are affecting the spirit man, the, the inside of me, the spirit living inside of me so that I can be connected and have the joy and the peace and the happiness that God wants me to have. And then listen to this. Number four, the last one, I want you to write it down. You've got to feed yourself or your, your soul an eternal perspective. An eternal perspective. And guys, this is so important because I really, really believe that for many of us, this is the problem. You see, God never created this world, and herein lies the problem. We're looking to the world to make us happy. In fact, we as Americans, can I just, can I just tell you something? We as Americans, our, our Declaration of Independence says the pursuit of happiness, right? The pursuit of happiness. And we're looking to the things of this world to make us, to make us happy. And so when, when, when life seems like it is just perfect, and all of a sudden we've got the perfect house and the perfect yard and the perfect marriage and the perfect financial life and the perfect kids, something breaks in our life, doesn't it? And all of a sudden, everything begins to fall apart. Someone that we love is diagnosed. Someone that we love passes away. And some of you have had this happen recently in your life. And if you're really honest, someone that you love, you, you know that they're gone. They're no longer here. And there's a pain and there's a hurt on the inside because you've been looking at this world to bring you happiness. And guys, let me just be transparent for a second. I want you to know, as your pastor, I wish that the world was different. I am disappointed all the time with the things that are happening in this world. I look around, and I'm disappointed with our government and the problems that we're facing around the world and in the Middle East. I'm disappointed with people. But can I tell you what I'm not? I'm not disappointed, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed, but I'm not discouraged. Because why? Because my hope is not in this world. One day, I'm going to take this old body off, and I'm leaving this world behind, and, and, I, and I'm headed for a different place. And my happiness is not rooted in the world. And, and as we fast, we've got to say to God, God, get this world out of me and help me to shift my, my, my view to eternity. And to understand that I am just a, a person who's passing through. I'm not going to be here forever. In fact, listen to this. Here's how Colossians puts it. It says this. It says, since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Think about heaven every day. Think about heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand, and think about the things of heaven and not the things of earth. And as we fast, we just need to say to God, God, help me get this, this, help me get this right. Let me have an eternal perspective rather than just an earthly perspective. Remember the verse in Psalms that I shared with you at the very beginning? I want to go back just for a second and share it again and listen to what it says. It says, why are you down in the dumps, dear soul, and why are you crying the blues? And he gives us the answer. He says, fix my eyes on God and soon I'll be praising again. I want to ask at all of our campuses, if you would, to bow your heads and to pray with me. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed and no one looking around, I just want to ask two questions very quickly. The first one is this. I wonder how many of you today would say, man, Pastor Marty, if I was really, really honest um, in my own life personally right now, 
there are some toxins and I am so disconnected from God. And I know that in my soul, these things are eating away at me. And today, as you were sharing some of those toxins, the Holy Spirit just specifically spoke to me about one in my own life that I know that I need to deal with. Would you just take this time right now just to say to God, God, help me this week. Help me this week just to, just to really examine my heart. And God, hone in on that toxin that is really causing me not to be and to experience the joy, the peace, the happiness that you want me to experience in my life. And help me to become the person, God, that you want me to become. For some of you, let me just say this. Maybe you're here today and you're not a follower of Jesus. And I want you to listen just very, very quickly to something. You say, man, your church is fasting and praying over the next 21 days. I mean, I, I don't even really believe in God. I don't, I don't even know that I believe in Christ. And I just want to make a challenge to you. I just want to challenge you over the next 21 days to just pray. And here, here's, here's the prayer that I want you to pray. If you would just say to God, God, help my unbelief. God, help my unbelief. I really believe that God would reveal himself over these next 21 days to you in your life. And I think it would change the way that you think, and it would change the way that your, your mind has been thinking about God. And just ask him if he would help you with that. For others of you, maybe you've been disconnected to get from God for a long time, and today, uh, today's the day that you want to get connected. You say, Pastor Marty, I don't have a relationship with God. And here's what I want you to know. The Bible says that every one of us has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious plan. But God, out of his amazing love for us, sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And it says that if you and I will confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For it's with the mouth that we confess and the heart that we believe. And today, I want to give you an opportunity to do that right now, right where you are. And you can simply do that by just simply praying a prayer, something like this. Just saying to God, dear God, I confess to you that I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart and be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Thank you, God, for loving me. And thank you, Jesus, for saving me. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed and no one looking around, if you just prayed that prayer on all of our campuses, I want you to look up at me just for a moment. I want to just challenge you today to turn over on the back of your connection card and just check off, hey, today I am committing my life to Jesus. And I'm going to ask you to do something very brave and very bold because I want to pray for you. But if you just prayed that prayer, would you right now just raise your hand up on all of our campuses? There you go. Just hold it up there just for a second. There you go. Hold it up there just for a second. And I want to pray for you as we close. You can put them down now. Thank you so much. Father, I thank you on all of our campuses for those today that are raising their hands. And God, I thank you for the new relationship that they have found in Jesus. And I pray today that, Lord, you would bless them as they begin to walk in their life with you. For those of us that are followers of Christ, I pray, God, that you would help us to discover those toxins that have gotten in the way of our relationship with you, that are keeping us not only from living the way that you want us to live, but from having the joy, the peace, the happiness, God, that you so desperately want us to experience in our hearts and in our lives each and every day. Father, as we receive our offering on all of our campuses today, I, I pray that you would bless uh, those that, that, Lord, are giving. I pray that you would take and you would use this tithe, not only here in our community, but around the world, to advance your kingdom and your purposes. For, Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. And we ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. I'm going to ask on all of our campuses at this time if our ushers would come and we're going to receive the offering. And as we prepare to give today, I just want to encourage you to go ahead and if you receive Christ, would you please place uh, your offering, or I'm sorry, your, uh, your uh, card in the offering bucket as the buckets are passed. And so they'll be bringing those to you. I'm going to ask you if you would turn your attention towards the screens as we receive our offering today.